much. Welcome everyone for this presentation. Uh, before I start telling you how I'm going to entertain you for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to tell you that the author, Thomas Bartoszek, couldn't come. He just became a father like two weeks ago. And on a Saturday morning, I get this lovely message from, from him <laughs> that, yeah, he, you know how I look like. <laughs> that I'm very happy to be here with you. So, how I'm going to entertain you. I start with a motivation, how or in why we developed this application, and a very quick introduction to linked open data, something very short, to uh, introduce our application, talking about the, how we create our data set, and how we implement the gestures in our application for interacting with the globe, I'm gonna show you later, and how we evaluate our approach. There's some conclusion in future work. So I'd like to start with this beautiful picture of the Brazilian Amazon that the Brazilians call the lungs of, of Earth. Uh, that unfortunately, it's getting more like this re recently. Although many efforts are, go, uh, are being conducted by INPI, the Brazilian research, uh, Space Research Institute, that since 2004 started a project for uh, fighting against deforestation that reduced from 2004 to uh, 27,000 squ uh, square kilometers to this number in 2012. It's awesome, but it's still a big number. And another known issues, the data produced, produced are quid for analysis, a huge amount of data produced every day. It's very hard to visualize, you need uh, experts to look through this data. And it's also very, very hard to correlate this deforestation, deforestation data with other information not only to, uh, to fight against the deforestation when it took place, but also to understand why it happens. And so we come with this, th these two questions that motivate our, our project. How to efficiently correlate the deforestation phenomena with external variables? And how to effectively communicate to the population in a very easy way that you don't need an expert for reading the information? Let's start with the first one. To make it possible to correlate this information with other sources, we uh, use the approach of the triangle of sustainability, which is a model that proposes that sustainable development occurs only when these three variables are taken into account, namely uh, environmental, uh, social, and economical variables. With this idea, we joined a competition last year called Wissenschaft Interactive, like interactive science, and we were awarded with 10,000 euros for developing this project. This, this project had unfortunately just four weeks time for development, so we had really, really to, to hurry up. And how we, we, we thought about, we have to correlate this uh, severe information, how to do that in, in, a, in a nice way. Then we had the idea to use linked open data for this. Uh, but what is linked open data? I'm gonna explain that in two minutes. I'll try to be very short. As we know the web, the way it is, we can publish our text, our image, our, our, our videos, and everything, and everything is very discoverable. It's really, really cool that we can navigate from one source to another, but also to one, from one document to another, just with a click, using, using the links. It's very, very, very good for discoverability, but unfortunately, it's just readable for humans. A computer doesn't understand w what's inside of, uh, of a picture. And simple questions like, what's the article about? We read that and you, we understand, but a computer just see a text, so a bunch of characters. Who is the author? Who wrote this? Does this person exist? What's inside of the picture? Or even some spatial related questions, when? where it by or by whom this picture was taken. A computer cannot understand that without us, us telling it. So Tim Berners-Lee, as he once said, linked open data describes a method of publishing structured data so that it can be interlinked and become more useful. What does it mean? Let's imagine we've got uh, a data set of a city and we convert to linked open data. It's uniquely identified as we've seen on our previous talk and we got information from many other sources, like the, uh, churches or cultural heritage, artistic pieces, and, and, and so on. And they're all interlinked. 
As soon as you uh, put your data to the, to the Linked Open Data Network, you, you can establish links to that and put more meaning and also to get more valuable with your data. Some, just wrapping up, some benefits that you can get, it, you can attach meaning to data so computers can also understand what stuff are. Allow uh, efficient thematic searches, like not only looking for an apple, but to say a company that's called apple, so our computers know what you mean. And it links different kinds of data sets, making the whole world a very big repository because you're linking to, to, the, world, to the world. Private and public data can be mixed and it enables like companies and individuals to make better decisions and possibly creating uh, innovations. So now that we are experts about linked open data, we I'm going to quickly say how we create our data sets. We took deforestation data uh, produced by the by INPI, the Brazilian government. And also from, from the Brazilian government, we took like stati statistical information, like the soybean crops, the heads of cattle, the GDP population, and the areas of each municipality of Brazil. We wrote a script in Python for downloading this information from the IBGE servers and triplify this information, create the triples, the RDF triples to correlate later. And we put everything in a single data set. The vocabulary that we use for that were the time and space core vocabulary and the open linked Amazon vocabulary for describing observations. We aggregate everything in grid cells of 25 by 25 kilometers and from a time series from 20, 2004 to 2009. So let's go to our second, our second part, how to effectively communicate to the population. That's most of the core of, of my presentation. We thought about creating a very interactive way using gestures for interacting with this information. Remember this, uh, the triangle I introduced before? Exactly the same concept we, we try to use in our application. Is the mouse key? Yeah. In every corner <coughs> of, the, uh, of our exhibit, we put the deforestation data correlated with a social, economical, or environmental information. Here, in, on the top, we put a camera that the person, the user, can, can be recognized and move the information. Here, just normal projector. I'm going to show that in, in detail. And this is a screenshot of, of the application, how it works. Basically, you're seeing, sorry to be written in German, uh, it's the deforestation correlated with the population of one state of, of Pará. The color means the deforestation level from green being very good and red very bad. And the, the height of the, the, those geometries are the, the population. The gestures we developed for, for Interact with the Globe was like this gesture here. You can move the globe to any position you want. To zoom in, like if you're swimming, I'm going to show that in the video soon. In the time travel, you put one hand up and we swipe with the other hand. Let me try to find the video here. Uh. This is the, the metal structure and placing the, the projectors. Yeah, and there you go. Kids love it. This zoom in. <laughs> yeah. It's very intuitive, isn't it? And zoom out the other way around. Yeah. If you see I don't know if you can see from the back, she she's changed the, the ears. So the values are changing in on top of the globe, everything linked to open data.
Yeah, the child needs an extension for that. I'm going to explain soon. Okay. That's it. Oops. And we want also to evaluate our, our approach for interact with the globe. And basically, we wanted to know from, from the users how well they felt using uh, interact with the globe using these gestures and how demanding it was. If it was too tiring, if it was a lot not corresponding, what do they expect? And we let all users using the ex exhibition for five to eight minutes. We got a questionnaire with tw 28 questions divided in two groups. The first one was dem just demographic information, like gender, if they're left-handed or right-handed. If you're familiar with the, any control interface or any console like Wii or, or something like that. And the second group of questions was using the NASA TLX, which is a subjective workload assessment tool for perform sub subjective workload assessment operators. The test group was basically of 43 people, 28 male, 15 female, the youngest one 10, the oldest 59, 7 left-handed and 36 uh, right-handed, and familiar with the those consoles, only 19. Those are the, the results. Uh, the questionnaire used a scale from 0 to 20, where lower values correspond to lower workload. The worst rated one was the time travel, this movement here. People didn't like it that much. Especially, it was very frustrating because you need a certain angle so the machine can understand that you, your hand is, is really up. And some older people find it very, very tiring to use this. The best rated one was the, the funniest one, like the zoom in, like the swimming movement. Something that we observed, most of the participants reported the gesture are men as mentally challenging just in the first minutes, like after two, three minutes that we started enjoying it and getting the, the gist. Other people found the system very accessible, particularly when compared with the first time using a, a mouse. We, we were very surprised to, to, to hear that. The user recognition gets considerably affected when bystanders are seen by the Kinect sensor. We still have to improve this because the, we have to say, uh, put a gesture for the computer understanding that the person is a new user. You have to do like this with the two arms up so the computer understands you. But if there are many people around you, the computer doesn't know, still doesn't know to whom give the rights or for using them uh, the software. Every some technical details, every scene was written in Java. The uh, user interface was in NASA Woodwind, this globe. The link and open data processing was developed using Jenna. They open an eye for the gestures to read in the gesture from the from the Kinect and convert into movements. And is everything free, open source? It's available on GitHub for, for download if someone is interested on, on hacking it. The hardware is really, really simple. Just one Kinect uh, Xbox sensor, cost 100 euros or something, a computer running Windows 7 and a, and a projector. From which side? Hmm? Like. This exhibition is now on tour in Brazil. It's been in two times in Recife. Uh, it's going to Campos do Jordão in November, and it's going to Belém, and also visiting many schools. The children said that it's a, it's a very, a very nice way for interact with maps, a, a way better than these plastic globes that they are in schools nowadays. Some conclusions. The triangles, we think, provide an interactive and easy solution to display spatial temporal data. It has a high acceptance in classrooms, as I told before, it has been 
all around in Germany and the geography teachers really also like it. Participants were able to learn how to use that three gestures without an excessive workload. And finally, Linked Open Data offers a good basis for efficiently connecting deforestation data with you know, external variables. Some future work, we have to improve the registration gesture, as I said before. We need any, any kind of, of, of system for separating the user from, from the background. Try different Connect frameworks. So far, we are just using this OpenAI. And enable heavy tracing by children, because we have a problem when children, because of the arm length. If the arms are too short, the software also cannot detect them. So I'm reaching the end of my presentation. I'd like to end with the same picture I started, with this beautiful picture here. It says, saving the forest will not only help our future generations, but we, it will also save the home of many partially naked Robin Hoods that are all around Brazil. <laughs> Having said that, in behalf of my team, I say thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>